One to one and onto. Everybody's talking about one to one and onto, but what do these words even mean? So in this video, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss the definitions. Um, we'll go through some examples where a linear transformation is described geometrically, and then you have to determine from that um, whether or not the transformation is one to one or onto. And then we'll do some examples where you can determine if the transformation is one to one or onto just by looking at the standard matrix of that transformation and and taking the pivots of that matrix into consideration. Okay, so starting off, what does one to one linear transformation mean? By the way, I keep saying linear transformation. Determining if a transformation is linear, that's the subject of the fourth video in this mini series on matrix transformations. Okay, anyway, um, a transformation is one to one if each output of the transformation has only one corresponding input. So if you're looking at a, a transformation and you say, oh, both of these vectors have the same output, then that transformation is not one to one. Onto, on the other hand, a transformation is onto if you can get every vector in the output space by doing the transformation of some appropriate input vector. So if you remember from the last video, the ev the vectors that you can get by applying the transformation, that's by definition the range of the transformation. And the output space is the codomain. So equivalently, you could say that a transformation is onto if the range, if the range equals the codomain. Okay, important fact. So it's another way to think about it. So let's jump right into our first example. Okay, so we have this transformation T. It takes vectors from R2 to R2. So the domain is R2 and the codomain is also R2. And the transformation T projects vectors onto the x-axis. So this looks kind of familiar. We went through this example in the last one. But now we want to determine is this transformation T one-to-one -one and is it onto? So let's think about some vectors. Let's say you take this vector, call it 1, 1, and you put it in as an input to this transformation. What do you get as an output? Well, you get this vector projected onto the x-axis. So that is the vector 1, 1, where its y component goes away and its x component stays the same. So here's your input, here's your output. But here is the critical thing. If I inputted, instead of 1, 1, what if I inputted the vector 1, 2, like this? Then what's the output vector for this input vector? Well, it's the same output. So you project the vector 1, 2 onto the x-axis, and you get the same vector 1, 0. So if, and so therefore, since you have multiple inputs corresponding to the same output, it's not 1 to 1. So t is not 1 to 1. Because here's t, and you input the vector 1, 1, that gets you the vector 1, 0 as an output. But if you input the different vector, 2, 1, then what's your output? It's the same, oh sorry, not 2, 1. This should be 1, 2. If you input a different vector, 1, 2, you get the same output, 1, 0. So a lot of times in questions it'll say, is the transformation 1 to 1? And if not, then provide two vectors with the same image under T. And all that means, the image under T is like the output. So like the image of the vector 1, 1 under T is the output when you use 1, 1 as the input. So these two vectors, these two different vectors, 1, 1 and 1, 2, have the same image under T. They, they yield the same output. And so T is not 1 to 1. Um, and I could have done any vector that has 1 as its x component. Um, it could have any y component. So all these vectors that I drew have the same output, the same image under t, which is the vector 1, 0. So it's not 1 to 1 because each output corresponds to multiple inputs. It's not 1 to 1. What about onto? If this transformation was onto, then we could get any vector in, in our output space by applying the transformation, right? Up here, onto. You can get every vector in the output space. But is that true? So for example, if I wanted to get this vector, say the vector 2, 1, as an output of our transformation that projects onto the x-axis, is that possible? No, it's not, right? You can't input a vector to this transformation, it projects it onto the x-axis, and then get a, a vector like sticking off the x-axis. Like That's impossible. So you say t is not onto. 
thinking about it with this in this way where uh, transformations onto if the range equals the codomain, what's the range of the transformation that projects vectors onto the x-axis? Well, we discussed it in the last video, the range, all the vectors that you can get by applying this transformation is the x-axis, right? But the, the output space, the codomain is all of R2. So the x-axis is not equal to all of R2. The range is not equal to the codomain, so it's not onto. So here's our answer for the first example. So let's move on to the next example. Okay, so in this example we have another transformation t that takes vectors in R2, transforms them into, transforms them into vectors still in R2, and what it does is it rotates your input vector clockwise by 30 degrees. So let's consider, is t, is this new t, this new transformation, is it one-to-one -one and is it onto? So um, if you have a vector that you um, are considering as an output, like this one. Are there multiple inputs that you could use to get this one output if you're just rotating by clockwise by 30 degrees? No, right? The only, let's redraw this one like this. If I have this output vector, the only input vector that's going to yield this output is the vector 30 degrees away from it, like this. So here would be your input vector, here would be your output vector, and then the angle would be 30 degrees. And this is the only input vector that gets this output vector. I could have done that for any vector in R2. So every output has a unique input. And that's the definition of a transformation being one-to-one. -one. So you say in this case, T is one-to-one. -one. And is it onto? Well, you think about it like, can I get any vector in the output space? So your output space here is R2. Can I get any vector in R2 by taking some appropriate input and rotating it 30 degrees? Yeah, you can. So I could pick any vector here, like this one, right? And this could be an output of the transformation. The input would just be a vector 30 degrees. Let's see, it goes clockwise, clockwise, so it would be 30 degrees counterclockwise. This would be your corresponding input for your output. And I could draw a corresponding input for any vector in R2, so I can get any vector in R2 by applying the transformation. So T is onto as well. Okay, that's all I have to say about this one. Let's do a third example. Okay, in the third example, we're taking input vectors in R3, transforming them into uh, output vectors in R2. And what does the transformation do? It projects the vectors onto the xy plane. So let's think about it geometrically. Here is a representation of the xy plane. And um, is this transformation one-to-one? -one? So in general, projections, right, tend to not be one-to-one -one because I could take this input vector or I could take this input vector or I could take this input vector and they have the same output vector, which would just be their projection onto the xy plane. So as long as their x and y components are the same, it doesn't matter what the z component is. When we project it onto the xy plane, it's going to be the same output vector. So you have multiple inputs corresponding to one output and so it's not one-to-one. -one. But is it onto? And this is an interesting case because before our projection transformation was, was not onto. But now since our output space is R2, we can get any vector in R2, right? We could pick any vector in this xy plane and then come up with a corresponding input that would get us to that vector by applying the transformation, by projecting onto the xy plane. Um, and so uh, since we can get any vector in R2 as an output, um, we say T is onto, right? The range of this transformation is all the vectors we can get, which is all the vectors on the xy plane. And the codomain is our output space, R2. And so the range is equal to the codomain. And so that's another way to think about it. The transformation is onto. All right, so now... I want to really quickly talk about if you're given the standard matrix of a transformation, how can you determine by looking at um, the pivots of that standard matrix whether or not the transformation that that standard matrix corresponds to is one-to-one -one or onto. So, so now we have our transformation defined as taking vectors in Rn, transforming them into vectors in Rm, where the transformation is defined by this matrix times a vector. We have our standard matrix A times our input vector x, a is m by n, x would have to live in Rn, therefore. 
And so we want to say, looking at the matrix A, how do we know if this transformation is one to one or one to two? So the answer is, it's one to one if there is a pivot in every um, column of A. Okay, and then it's on to if there's a pivot in every row. Okay, why does this stuff make sense? Well, if you look at the transformation AX equals B, and you consider that A has a pivot in every column, then what does that mean? That means that there are no free variables. So pivot in every column means no free variables. And that means that there's a unique solution to AX equals B. So for each output that we pick B, our solution would be the X would be our input matrix, our input vector. And if there's no free variables, that means there's a unique solution. So there's a unique input for a given output. Um, so that's why this one-to-one -one pivot in every column should make sense. What about onto? If there's a pivot in every row of A, that means that you can get any um, you can get any vector as an output. How does that make sense? Okay, consider the augmented matrix A, B, and consider that you have a whole bunch of rows in A, um, and then your B vector goes here. And if you have a pivot in every row, so that would look something like this. So pretend there's a bunch of entries in each row, and I'm just circling where the pivots are. So here's a pivot, here's a pivot, here could be a pivot, here could be a pivot. Then no matter what we put in here for our B matrix, these could be any number right? No matter what we put here, it'll be consistent because, well, since we have a pivot in every row of A, there'll never be a pivot in the augmented column, which is the telltale sign of an inconsistent system. And so if no matter what B we pick, there will be an input that'll get us there, means that we can get any, any vector in, look, looks like here, R4, we can get any vector in our output space and get to it by picking an appropriate input vector X, meaning this is consistent. So as long as there's a pivot in every row, then we can get any vector in the output space. This is in contrast to if we had some rows and not a pivot in every row. Then what if we pick some, some B vector like 3, 2, 1, where this last entry is not 0. If we don't have a pivot in this, in this row, that means these are all zeros, and we'd have 0 equals 1. That would be inconsistent. So if we didn't have a pivot in every row in this case, um, we could get some B, we could pick some B that we couldn't get to. There's some B in our output space that it's impossible to get to uh, by applying this transformation because this would be inconsistent if we have zero equals one. Okay, hopefully that didn't confuse you too much. I just wanna try to explain like where these things come from. But in summary, if you're looking at the standard matrix of a transformation, you can, you can look and see, is there a pivot in every column? If so, then the, the transformation is one to one. Is there a pivot in every row of the standard matrix? If so, then the transformation is on to. Okay, awesome. In the next video, we're gonna talk about if you are, uh, if you're, if you're considering a transformation geometrically, how can you determine what the standard matrix of that transformation has to be? Okay, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.